Los Angeles County Fire Department, Fire Station 15. I'm also in charge of the vehicle extrication instructor cadre at recruit training. Today we're going to go over vehicle extrication and a few points we're going to cover today are vehicle construction and terminology. We're going to discuss scene size up, vehicle and patient assessment. We're going to demonstrate vehicle stabilization, taking glass, peeling and peaking, and go over the 10 10 20 rule. Finally, we're going to demonstrate vehicle extrication techniques. Okay, let's talk about vehicle stabilization. When we stabilize a vehicle, we need to have our extrication needs in mind. Usually stabilizing a vehicle in one location per slide is acceptable, and stabilizing under the vehicle lay post is going to be your best location. Our goal with vehicle stabilization is to remove the vehicle suspension from the equation. Another option when you have a taller vehicle, you can flip your step chalk over so you can get that additional height to reach the frame. And again, you would do this on both sides of the vehicle. Another option for your vehicle stabilization is to use your pry bar to lift the frame of the vehicle and your lumber box grip. I think we're going to talk about glass removal. The first thing you want to think of when you're removing glass is you only remove glass when it's absolutely necessary to uh, assist in getting the patient out. Second thing you want to remember is when you're going to remove glass, you want to announce it to everybody else that's working that you're going to take glass so it doesn't take them by surprise. You're going to want to make sure that you cover your patient first and he's protected from any flying shards of glass. When you're removing a windshield, you need to remember that it's laminated, so you're going to have to cut it with a tool such as an axe or a sawzall. And when you're removing the side windows or the rear windows, those are tempered. You can break those, preferably in the top corner with your window punch or uh, with the tip of a halogen. Good glass on the windshield is use your personal axe to gain a purchase point on the top of the windshield. Then you can use your sawzall to cut towards yourself and you're going to cut down the A post. You're going to do that on both sides and then you can flip the windshield straight the down. When you're cutting the laminated glass with the sawzall, it's going to create a fine dust from the glass so you want to make sure you take personal protection so you don't have an inhalation hazard. you use is your pry bar. Putting your hand about four to six inches from the tip, not using a lot of uh, force on the windshield. Now let's talk about purchase points. The purchase point is where you're going to insert your extrication tool during your extrication. You have five options to create a purchase point. One of those is a fender crush using your spreaders. Firefighter Lily is going to demonstrate that. The second option to create a purchase point is using a door pinch. A door pinch is where we're going to place our spreaders down on the door, pinch and crush the door. 
This can be done from the pin side or the hinge side, depending which way you need to open that door. create a purchase point can be done using a hand tool such as a halligan. This skill can actually be performed by the first on scene engine company. fourth option to gain a purchase point is what we call a pinch and peel. This is where you're going to take your spreaders, you're going to pinch onto an exposed area of the vehicle and then use the weight of the spreaders to peel that area open. Performing your airbag assessment, the first place you need to look for an airbag is the steering wheel. If the steering wheel has an airbag, you then need to look in the passenger dash. If the passenger dash as well has an airbag, you need to then assume that the rest of the car will have airbags. Try to locate airbags in the A, B, and C post, as well as the driver's seat and the front passenger seat. Now we're going to talk about peeling and peaking. The purpose of peeling and peaking is to remove the interior covering from the A post, B post, C post, as well as pulling back the headliner. The purpose for doing that is we're trying to locate our airbags, our airbag gas canisters, our seatbelt pretensioning devices, and our seatbelt backing plates. When we're peeling and peaking, we're always going to maintain the 10-10-20 rule. Time out. Now we're going to demonstrate door removal. Firefighter Alvarado is going to remove the front passenger door from the inside. Next we're going to go ahead and discuss and then show you the B-post blowout, also known as the full side removal. We've started by removing the back door, we've opened that up, B-post blowout works from the pin side to the hinge side of a vehicle. We're next going to cut a nice deep relief cut in the bottom of the B-post, just above and in line with the rocker panel. Okay, our first option for you using the spreaders is to place your spreaders directly into your relief cut. The bottom tip is going to spread up and off of your rocker panel. 
the top tip is going to go up into the top of the relief cut that you created and spread the B post up and away. Your second option for spreader placement is to place your bottom tip on the rocker panel. Your top tip is going to go up against the bottom hinge of the back door and spread the B post up and away. Your third option for spreader placement is to place the bottom tip of your spreader at the seat well and the top tip is going to go up against the bottom of your relief cut and spread the B post up and away. Okay, so we've accomplished our B-post blowout. We've torn all the way through the remainder of the B-post that we didn't cut, and we've removed the doors and the B-post up and away from our passenger space, which was our goal. You can see that we still do have the top, though, of the B-post intact. The reason we do that is it allows us to perform this skill. It also keeps the top of the B-post, if it's cut, from going down into our passenger space and in towards our patients. Now to complete our B-post blowout, we just need to remove the entire section. We're going to do that by either popping the front hinges or cutting the front hinges. One sec, Doug. talk about roof removal. When you're performing a roof removal, you have two options available to you. Either a partial removal that we call a flap or a full removal. Our recommendation is anytime you're going to remove a roof, you remove the entire roof. We're going to talk about a dash displacement. We have two options for dash displacement. You have a dash jack and a dash roll. We're going to go ahead and talk about and then demonstrate for you a dash jack. So we're performing this skill because we have a driver trapped in the front seat from a front end collision. Our first steps is to do our relief cuts. Our relief cuts are going to go through the bottom of the A post and wrap around the A post into the firewall. It's key that we cut into the firewall. We're going to start by cutting and lifting our fender up and away so that you can actually see the materials that you need to cut and you can visually confirm that you've cut through both dual walls of the bottom of the A-post. Okay, we've peeled back our front fender now so that we have a clear line of sight to our A-post area where we need to cut. Our relief cut's going to go in between our two door hinges. We also need to make sure we wrap that cut all the way around and cut into the firewall. Next, we're gonna take out a four inch piece in our A post, and we need to make sure that we compromise our front fender. If the front fender has not been compromised from the damage during the crash, we need to make sure that we compromise it, whether we cut it with our cutters or we crush it with our spreaders. accomplished our relief cut in the bottom of our A post and wrapped it around into our firewall. Our next step is to take our spreaders, place it, them into that relief cut and start to jack the dash. A second option though is to make a second horizontal cut above the first, peel that piece of material away and it gives us a little bit deeper 
of a purchase point for our spreaders to be placed. Your next option for a dash displacement is a dash roll using your ram. We don't have a B-post accessible to us, so we're using a halligan as our foothold for our tool. We're going to demonstrate for you now a third door technique. Third door technique is going to be used when you have in trap passengers in the back seat that you need to gain access to. We're going to end up cutting through the B post material and the side of the car and then flapping this entire area downward.